Kia ora and welcome to this video on question one of the 2022 Skull Calc exam. Um, this exam had three parts to every question. Uh, question one here is quite algebraic. The first is complex numbers, part B trig, and part C algebra. Um, I'm going to run through the three problems as a student. I will explain some steps, but um, I've got a couple of alternative solutions that I've found that will be at the end of the video. Um, one for part A and one for part C. Okay, so part A. Z is a complex number that satisfies this equation. A is positive and not equal to 1. Um, the reason why it's not equal to 1 is because if we make A is equal to 1, we get the equation modulus Z plus 1 equals modulus of Z plus 1. Now that's true for all complex numbers. And if we consider the argand plane and all complex numbers in it, they all have different moduli. Well, this question is telling us to find the modulus of z in terms of a, suggesting that it's a constant. If it has a con constant modulus, irrespective of what z is, z must, uh, the locus of z must be a circle. Uh, you can actually prove it's a circle. But just jumping straight into this problem by subbing in x plus iy is actually a good strategy. So if I go x plus iy uh, in there for z, be real careful with my squaring. To take the modulus of a complex number, we need to group terms. We need to group the real part, keep the imaginary part separate. Uh, the modulus of a complex number is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, square rooted. That's just Pythagoras. Then we square both sides. Expand out the brackets. Start um, recognizing where we're heading with this. We want the modulus of z, which is going to involve x squared and y squared, and we've got that. Um, this right-hand side has also got an x squared and a y squared. So if I move all the x squared and y squared to one side, I've got x squared times 1 minus a, because right, there's an ax squared there, and I'm going to move it to the left as negative ax squared. We've also got a y squared times 1 minus a. And then the constant term on the right-hand side currently is a. The two, x's, two ax terms cancel. We've got a, and then I'm going to join it with a minus a squared. This a squared term, I move it to the right-hand side. And then if you recognise that that a minus a squared is just a times 1 minus a, then we can cancel off the common factors of 1 minus a. a is not 1, so we're allowed to divide by 1 minus a. And we get x squared plus y squared equals a. So the modulus of z, which is the square root of that, is square root a plus, it's a positive square root, because the modulus is a distance. Okay, so that's uh, part A. We'll look at an alternative solution for that shortly. Part B. System of equations, x plus y equals pi over 4, tan x plus tan y equals 1. You might spot straight away that 0 pi over 4 is a solution. When x is 0 and y is pi over 4, the um, equations are satisfied. The equations are also symmetric, which um, means that the x and y are interchangeable. Okay, there's a couple of ways of attacking this. Um, I'm going to just take the tan of both sides of the first equation. So if I go tan of x plus y is tan of pi over 4 and tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Um, I can use the compound angle formula to expand this. It's not just tan x plus tan y, but it's tan x plus tan y over 
1 minus tan x tan y, and that equals 1. We already know that tan x plus tan y is equal to 1. So we get um, 1 over 1 minus tan x tan y equals 1. Cross multiplication. Um, works, or you could just notice that this dude here must equal zero for the um, for this equation to be satisfied. One over one is equal to one. So tan x times tan y equals zero has two possibilities. Either tan x equals zero or tan y equals zero. Uh, tan x equals zero at an infinite number of positions x is equal to n times pi, where n is an integer, uh, or y is equal to n times pi, or we'll lose a different letter, k pi. n and k belong to the integers, z is um, the letter for integers. Uh, if x is equal to n pi, we know that the solutions have to add to pi over 4. Okay, if they have to add to pi over 4, then y would have to be pi over 4 minus n pi, in this case. Uh, or in the other possibility, when y is k pi, x would have to be equal to pi over 4 minus k pi. Um, you get slightly different solutions if you um, approach the problem in a slightly different way, but the key thing to note there is there's an infinite number of solutions. 0 pi over 4 is one particular solution. Okay, part C. Uh, I think this problem was intended to be done in a particular way because if you look at the um, symmetry of this equation here, um, you're not expected to just chuck this equation into the graphics calculator and solve it. If you do, though, you can actually get the answer. Um, let's look at using the symmetry to solve the problem instead. So x to the 4 plus x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. And we know this quartic has at most four solutions. Fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that. Um, if you do chuck it into the calculator, you get x equals 1 as a repeated solution. But you were told in the question that x is negative. x is less than 0. So we don't want x equals 1. Um, if I divide this whole polynomial through by x squared, um, I knew to do this because I'd seen a problem similar before. What that does is it brings in symmetry with the coefficients as well. Um, sorry, we, we had symmetry with the coefficients, um, but now we've got symmetry with the powers as well. So at this stage, if you go and let u equal to um, x plus 1 over x as a substitution, um, we can see that that's appearing there, x plus 1 over x. We've also got the x squared plus 1 over x squared business. So if we square this u, that's x squared plus 1 over x squared plus two lots of x times one over x, meaning that x squared plus one over x squared is u squared minus two. Going back to the polynomial, we've got uh, u squared minus two, the yellow stuff, plus u, the blue stuff, minus four equals zero. We have a quadratic. Factorise that in skull if something factorises you know you're on the right track um, u is equal to minus 3 or u is equal to 2 but remember that u is equal to x plus 1 over x and we're told that x is negative for this question if x is negative then u must be negative as well so we take um, we reject that one and we take that And then we solve x plus 1 over x is equal to negative 3. 
Now, we don't want to find x. This question doesn't ask us to find what x is, um, although that is a strategy that works. We are asked to find x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. So if we cube this thing, that's going to be equal to minus 27. Expanding out using the binomial theorem, Um, if you're not sure about the binomial theorem, I've got earlier videos that I've used it, but um, search it up. It's how you quickly expand terms like a plus b all cubed. Um, we've got x cubed plus 1 over x cubed there is the thing we want. And then the other terms we've got is a common factor of 3. The first term is x and the next term is 1 over x. But we already know that x plus 1 over x is equal to minus 3. So x cubed plus 1 over x cubed is equal to minus 27. Take away 3 lots of minus 3. And that equals minus 18. So I believe that's the way the question was intended to be done, um, using a substitution x plus 1 over x. But we will look at that shortly in a different way. And that's question 1. Okay, going back to this complex numbers problem, um, a common thing to do when you've got modulus problems um, is to think of them as distances uh, and to think of it as a geometric uh, question. Sometimes it's too hard to do it, but in this question it's not. So if I have this problem here, The first thing I do is read this left-hand side as the distance between z and negative a. Okay, it needs to be written as modulus of z take away negative a, where a is a real number. So I put negative a um, onto the real axis. Um, in this diagram, I've let, I've let a is equal to 4. I've chosen a square number. Um, so that there is negative a. The right-hand side has a distance between z and minus 1. And then the question says the distance between z and minus a is equal to the square root of a times the distance between z and minus 1. So this distance, whatever it is, d1, the distance between z, now z is anywhere that's on the circle. Turns out it's a circle, it's called the circle um, of Apollonius. Apologies for my Greek spelling there, but um, if we look at this distance, this is d2, it's square root of a multiplied by d1. And because I chose a equal to 4, that distance is double, you can see that. Distance from negative 1 to minus 2 is 1. Distance from minus 2 to minus 4 is 2. And that's true for every point on the circle. So if you look at the point C, for example, this distance here, D1, double it, and you get the distance to A. That's not really a proof. It's just showing you on a diagram that it works. So there are two real solutions for this problem. There's a real solution there, and there's also a real solution there. The distance from negative 1 to 2 is 3, and the distance from negative 4 to there is um, 6, which is double. So right back at the start, I said if you um, consider some real solutions to the problem, they also have the same modulus as the complex ones. Hence why the answer was a circle and the distance is the modulus is the square root of a. Okay, and the last question, um, as I said, this was the intended way of solving it, but you might use your calculator to um, to assist you on this. If
if you notice that x equals 1 is a repeated root, now you might note that by inspection or your graphics calculator, but subbing in x equals 1 works, that means that x minus 1 all squared is a factor. Um, I'll leave this as an exercise for you guys, but if you factorise this, uh, you know that it needs to start with an x squared, and you know it needs to start uh, finish with a 1. You just have to work out that the middle term there is 3x. Okay, you could do, use long division or you could factorise by inspection. Just check that that works. Uh, because x is less than 0, so um, x satisfies this equation. Now, we could solve this. We could use the quadratic formula and solve it. Um, but doing that um, is just going to give us ugly thirds to work with. And remember that we've got to find x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. Um, we don't want to have to cube an ugly third. We don't want to go to decimals and cube it. Yes, we'd get the right answer, but we wouldn't be showing elegant working. As soon as you reach for a graphics calculator, you're losing, um, potentially losing marks. So what, what do we want? We need x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. Now, your teacher's probably told you when you're solving quadratic equations, you make it equal to 0. Well, this is an example where you don't. This is a bit of a hack here, but if you rearrange this quadratic to x squared plus 3x equals negative 1, and then what are we going to do here? Divide through by x squared cubed what am I doing I don't want to rearrange it like that rearrange it like this to use the symmetry of the coefficients and the powers divide through by x oh that's so cool that's the that's the equation we had before and then we continue as, as we did before. We cube both sides. Um, and then we've got x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 3 lots of x plus 1 over x, which we know is equal to minus 3. Therefore, x cubed plus 1 over x cubed equals minus 18. How neat. So from the quadratic equation there, if we just rearrange and divide through by x, we end up with that yellow um, equation, which we got earlier, uh, and then we can cube it to find our answer. Catch you in the next video.